to the serpent. And that's why I went over a lot of that serpent stuff last week. So this would be inner space uh, 20. Yeah, but we were, but we were on this last week, and, and we're. Mm -hmm. So, are you finishing up? Is that what you're saying? I'm going to finish up through ninety one. We're going to get done with that, so we can go to the part two thing. Yeah, if, I <laughs> can. <laughs> if I can, if I can, if I can. All right, we'll get going here because I'm going to do a little short class on Lagba Omer because that's today. <laughs> and so we ought to know what that is. All right, today we get to study Torah for the sake of heaven, for the sake of Israel and all Jerusalem. We're about to give the, our Torah and the merit of our study of Torah to Stephen King, Avraham ben Moshe Gila, Linda Flora, Carly Cerro, Brandon Walsh, Raymond Rosen, Prager, Brooke Gibson, Paul Navares, Garrett Matlin, the Patients of Texas Oncology, Rita Wilson, H. Ellen Bedeman Kusky, Lola Daughter, Justin Lakeisha Neal, Berea Wanstaff, Elise Hagar, Nate East Freeman, Logan Willis, Billy Hope, Charles David, Rosa Hollander, Christopher Durkin, Noel Cardoza, David Douglas, Vicki McLean, Tom and Karen Maitland, Sander Hayes, Carol Tico, Larry Langberg, Jill Navarez, Blake Hanna, Lila Briscoe, Sam Peak, Yehuda Hyde, Ben Matai Lea, James Lennon, David Jenkins, Jake Suarez, Bobby Williams Sr., Sally Talamantes, the Rogers Family, Damian Washington, Carol Scott, Rabbi Richmond, Maurice Greenwood, Gracie Bill Linder, Brandy Boots, Amanda Elliott, Frank Pollard, Carol's Family, Baby Denard, Michelle Magnuson, Jenna Marie, Kimberly Brown, Debbie January, Kim Lively, Crispin Rodriguez, Sandra Hearth, Virgil Williams, Brad Mace, Jocelyn Living, Nickerson, Jerry, Matt Ledge, Dylan, Tico Lamber, Merchant, Simka, Benam, Rahman, Family, Celinda, Sheffields, Louis Gutierrez, and Family, Aaron Price, uh, Jazworth, Jazworth Carroll, uh, Sonia Kinzer, Kathy Jones, come on in there, Brad. Uh, Jean, son of Jock, Coach Nelly Ward, Hila Buello, Miranda Rosas, Jim Barfield and family, Naomi Botsimka, <laughs> Terry King, Ron Whitlow, Kathleen Graham Walsh, Brennan's family, Miley Rose, Monica Johnson, Ed and Dottie Garrison, Moshe Salavechek, <laughs> Donna Marie, Farrar Sajid, Vincent Ewing, Darlene Yass, Debbie Henson, Anita Jones, Jessica Ross, Douglas Eldridge, uh, Brennan Welch, Jacob and Simka, Salvador Gutierrez and family, Phoebe Bridges, Max Wagner, son of Marcy Wagner, uh, Mark Matledge, Emily Baktova, Jackie Cup, Nadine Bot Miriam, Carla Manzanares, Beth Carmen, James Rogers, Elvia Rosas, Alton Tillman, and I was watching the news last night. There's this little girl. Her name's Kayla. She has a brain tumor. She's a young girl, five years old, lives in Riesel. And, uh, her mom says all she wants to do is pray for people. So I thought we'd mm -hmm. we'd we'd put her on here too. I didn't get her last name, but. God knows who she is. Ruler of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God, and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you, that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and they should not bring separation between you and us. May it be your will before you, our God, and the God of our fathers, that you will awake and prepare our hearts to love and revere you, and may you listen to our utterances and open our <clears throat> closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah and may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as warm with sweet incense and may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being and may you sparks of your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine and may their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we should not stumble through our study and by their merit enlighten our eyes in our learning as stated by King David the sweet singer of Israel now listen to this part because we're going to go over it today Open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. All right. Inner space 20. Now, today, before we get into that, is the 33rd day. And now that it's sundown, it's the 34th day. But call it 33rd day. The sun's not down yet. Mm -hmm. Good point. Thirty third day <laughs> of uh, the Omer. Now, counting Omer, thanks to Russell, um, we have gotten to a point to where this is a recognized day. All right, and but what are they recognizing? What's going on? It's it's not it's not a halakhic deal. It's not even a Talmudic deal. 
It's a deal that they just do. It's a tradition or a custom. All right? Mm -hmm. So what's going on? Well, we know counting the Omer is counting the spherotic structure. You know, you're mm -hmm. starting with Hesed and you go to, to Ferret and Guvero and you just count the, count the seven of the lower seven and that's your 49. And this is counting the days that they came out to get the Torah. Mm -hmm. All right? But it's, uh, it's kind of happened over the last hundred years. And one of the traditions is men don't cut their hair during this time from Passover to Logba Omer. Men don't cut their hair. The Jews don't cut their hair. And we're going to find out why. And, um, but what is, what it's, everything's kind of a decoy of, of what's going on. So Logba Omer is a Kabbalist dream. It's, it's, it's designed for Kabbalist. It's made by Kabbalist. And even though 90 probably percent of Judaism does not do Kabbalah, they're all going to do Log Belmer. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like they don't believe in Kabbalah, but they're all going to count the, <laughs> count the, count the Omer anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's going on during this time, Rabbi Akiva had 12,000 students times two, it says. So he had 24,000 students. During this time, all of the students were dying in a mysterious plague. And on the 33rd day, it stopped. All right? So, what is the day before 33? 32. 32. What do we know about the number 32? 32 oh, the, 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 the yeah. 32 Pass of Wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 10 Shirot and the 22 letters are the 10 to 32 Pass of Wisdom. Okay? Mm -hmm. So so this is the 32 Pass of Wisdom and the Koel, which is 33. Mm -hmm. All right? So y'all can see how we're getting in the Kabbalah now mm -hmm. part. All right. So uh, is this whole thing a decoy about Akiva and everything? We have to ask the question, what's going on? So after today... Cutting the hair is okay. Now, <clears throat> Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai gave his final teaching today, <clears throat> and he died today. Now, who is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? He's the author of the Zohar. He is the author of the Zohar. All right. So, when if if you look, uh. Well, we'll get to that point. So, but who was Simon Bar Yochai's teacher? Elijah. He, for the Zohar, but who was his who was his rat rabbi? None other than Rabbi Akiva. All right. So we see how the plot starts. There's a twist in here. All these guys are dying except for Simon Bar Yochai and four other guys. Right, Rabbi Akiva's students were dying, and on this day it stopped. But there's a cover up going on here. 1800 years ago, what was going on during this same time period? If if Logba Omer just started 100 years ago or 150 years ago, the writing of the I don't know, lots of things were going on. The writing yeah. of the Talmud, uh, the lots of things, yeah, right? Zohar or the, the so, what was going on when they came out of the desert? Are we see, there's a fractal of something that's going on as we're coming out of the desert. Now, when they're coming out of the desert, they're coming out of a place of cottonwood. Yeah. So, the first 32 days are, are cottonwood and it's dinning. So, when something is dinning, what is dinning? What are they not doing for 30? What are the men not doing for 33 days? Cutting their hair. They're not cutting their hair because hair guru. is guru. denim. So that's why they're not doing it. Now we got the Kabbalah going in here. <clears throat> but this doesn't affect the beard because the beard is rockamine. Okay? So guys who, some Jews that are clean shaven, they don't cut, they don't shave for the 30. 33 days and then, then, then they'll shave but there's no prohibition against cutting the beard because they don't cut 
because they don't cut their beard at four, <laughs> you see. One of the reasons why it's head, what's the difference between the head and the beard? Because the head has a backside where the beard is on the face. The beard is part of the panin, sarha panin. It's part of the face of Metatron, whereas the hair is on the back, so that's the akraim. Akraim means the other side. All right? So they don't want to feed the other side, so to speak. <coughs> now, um, one of the things like uh, that, that you don't do, uh, there's, there's certain things that you don't do uh, if, if you're a mourner, you know, you don't cut your hair, you don't put on tefillin, you, you don't do some of these things. Same, uh, all those people that we talked about in class last week, the Zav, the Zava, the, the pregnant woman, the Mitzora, and all those stuff, they can't do certain things wrong when they're on the outside. Put on tefillin's one, all right? Um, and cutting their hair is one. So, it appears that this is a time of mourning, but it's really not a time of mourning. The 33, the 33 days have been converted down to three years. And, and so Jewish kids uh, don't cut their kids' hair for three years. And on Logba Omer, they all bring their kids to the haircut guy and everybody gets a haircut all the kids that are three years old cut their hair on this day. All right? This is just the customs, the traditions that are going on. So what makes Rabbi Akiva's students all die and then mysteriously stop? <clears throat> that's our, that's our, what's going on. Now, a year after this happened, Rabbi Simon Bar Yochai gave a shmika, which is an ordination, gave a shmika to five guys. Uh, Rabbi Kiva did to five guys. One of them was Simon Bar Yochai. These, so if we have the five Has uh, Guver wrote, these are the five Hasidim. He's mitigating the whole thing. Rabbi Kiva was. So, Rashbi, which is the, the, the name for Rabbi Simon Bar Yochai, he actually died on the day he got his Shemekah, years later. He dies on Log Omer, as does his son Elazar. It's that night, Rashbi gathered his students around and said, Tonight I will give you the secrets of the Torah. I will, tell, I will tell you the secrets of the Torah. And fire encircled them, and the bot coal came out, the voice came out, you know, the, and, and he died, and, his, and it's, it says his bed was lifted up, and it carried him to uh, Moran, where he's buried this day up by Sfat. All right? So there's a custom to build a bonfire to simulate the fire that surrounded them at uh, when he was giving his students the secrets of the universe. And what is this fire? The fire is the Zohar. Zohar stands for the illumination, the light, the fire of the, of the illumination. So this is called Helula the Rashbi, the celebration of Rabbi Simon Bar Yochai. So if we have uh, 33, which is today's the 33rd day, how many more days is it until uh, Shavuot? We got it 50. So there's 17 days. What do we know is 17? <laughs> 17 is the gematria of Tove. <laughs> 17 is the gematria of Tove. 
this is this head. is the light of Brashit where God said he saw the light and it was good. Tov. So now we see what's going on. The 33 days are the constriction of Katnut. Now that's dead. And from there on out, they were they were seeing the light of Sinai. They didn't just get there and it was light there. They were stepping into the light. Every day it was brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. So now they're coming in to Godlut, from Katnut to Godlut. So 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 that's why Rabbi Simon Bar Yochai, there's the bonfire, there's the light, and, and what did he give them? The secrets of Torah. What were they going to go get? The secrets of Torah. See how it's all mirroring itself? So Joseph's story begins when he is 17 as well. Now, the tet in the letter Tov is uh, in the shape of a serpent. The tet, how it wraps around, it's in the shape of a serpent. This is the whole Leviathan, Mashiach, Nakash thing that's wrapped in the Tov, the, the, the two tails of the light. So if we go toward 50, when we get to 49, we, that's when we stop counting the Omer. 49 is Memtet, Metatron. So that's, so plus, the, plus then you add the 50, and that's, that's Ema, that's the Divine Mother, that's Bina, they're, they're, they're there, all right? So they're coming into that light as, as it's increasing. And this is, what is, this is what's going on, what, where we're stepping into tomorrow. They were moving into the halo of Torah, the Sod of 17. You encounter it before you ever get there. You start encountering the light before you ever achieve it, see. And the, uh, at, at the, at the uh, deal, at the custom, the, they're, they're, they have to ask the question, they have to ask, they have like a Haggadah, just like the Haggadah of Passover, you know, why are we eating this? Why, why are we eating unleavened bread tonight? Why are we doing this? Why do we have a fire? Why do we have burning, why are we burning the logs? Why are we, you know, so they're, they made a, a Kabbalistic tradition to teach the sod of the light of the first day and light of the Torah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Within this, within this whole deal, because the what is the secret of the matter? The thirty-third day is hode of hode. Hode is her feet descend to death. That is hode. But this is the hode of hode. This is the constriction of constriction. Now, as it, as everything works in Torah, um, like the. Uh, like Noah, if you look the other way, it's Chaim, which is, means grace, and God, Noah found grace in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. Everything is inversion. So if it's hoed one way, if, if you're looking down from 4D, it's hoed. If you're looking up from 3D, it's Dave. What is that in Hebrew? Death. So from 3D, it was death, 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 death. From 4D, it's hode. It's glory, 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 glory. Hmm. Just, the end, just the opposite. Hmm. So today, it, they, so now we see why we have Rabbi Akiva. There was death and death. And they were inverting, they were, they were literally inverting the whole thing to glory, glory, glory. So log is lamed, Gimel. And this this term, if you if you if you invert it from just like the L and the G, if you turn it just like we did on Hode, if you do it from 3D to 4D, it's not what you're looking at where you're looking from. Mm -hmm. It's gall. And it's it's talking about the opening of the eyes. And this gall is Open my eyes so that I will see the wonders from your Torah. 
which is just exactly what we read in the prayer of the Ari when he's talking about reading the Zohar. So when we're going, you, you see, so when we're going through, this is the this is the opening of the eyes where you're really seeing the light mm -hmm. until you get into the Torah. Um, so the fire is the Torah, and the, and, the, and the brilliance is the Zohar, and that's the male and the female. That's when the fire comes down and consumes the offering. This is the whole thing that's, that's going on. And so what this is, what, we're, what we are to experience here is a microcosm of this act. So that's what Lag the Omer is. On the on the on the quick shot. Now, I'll, we're going to talk a little bit when we get there about opening the eyes. Adam saw it was good for food. You know, God saw the light and it was good. There's a lot of seeing going on in Torah. God, I will go down and see. You know, He talks about coming down and seeing the Tower of Babel for himself. He's got to see it for himself. Can he not see it? What is he seeing? What's all this looking? What's going on with the with with the looking? All right, and we know from our histal shalut that there are the lights of the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. So there's light emanating out of the eyes, and this is one of the things that is the only way. If the only thing the eyes do is bring in light. That's it. They don't see anything. They see the light reflecting off whatever it is. And so it's a it's a light uh, it's kind of like a light lens, you know, mm -hmm. that refracts and then your brain will turn it upside down because if you've ever seen the picture or any study of anatomy of sight, everything is upside down because we live in an inverted universe. And then the brain has to turn it right side up for us to see it like that. So our brain actually flips our reality so that we see it straight. And what we're going to get into a little bit, if we have time here at the end, is a piece on the Leshem about looking at the rainbow. Now, uh, was it Heimvelosian or... I think it was. At his his right before his death, his students ask him. He says, um, uh, "He says you can ask me any question you want to. I'll reveal you any secret you want to, but you cannot ask me about the Kriyat Yamsuf, which is the splitting of the sea, which we've gone into in great detail. And the other one was, the other one was the rainbow, and." When when you see the rainbow, you know Mashiach is near. And there's more rainbows right now than ever before. Noah, Noah Hyde's got a rainbow flag. The LTGB movement has a rainbow flag. There's <clears throat> rainbows stinking everywhere. All right? Not to mention the rainbows that we see. And there's strict halakha about not looking at the rainbow. All right? So we'll... Uh, We'll go into that a little bit here at the end if we get if we get time. If not, I'll save it for next time. But we got to go through it. It's peace on the lesson. Okay, so let's start back here and let's try to finish this up. Um, starting page eighty-eight. According a uh, second paragraph. According to the serpent, uh, if you remember from our last class, uh, the there was a huge question. Uh, uh, if, if God created man in his own image and own likeness and the serpent said, if you eat this, you'll be like God knowing good and evil. Why don't you want to eat it? Because it, it, isn't that the point, right? That's That was the serpent's uh, havamina. That, that's what he brought, okay? So it continues. This, the, according to the serpent, the same principle was applied here. He therefore argued that since God himself was the creator of evil, he, he therefore knew good and evil. If Eve wanted to eat from the tree of knowledge, she too would know good and evil. And in this way, she would resemble God. The serpent contended 
that in doing this, Eve would fulfill God's purpose in creation since she would be emulating him. It is difficult at first to understand Eve's motives of disobeying God's specific commandment to abstain from eat, eating of the fruit, which we covered extensively last few uh, last class, uh, maybe class before that. And the snake pointed out, however, that God's totally independent. It follows then that in order to completely emulate God, she would need to assert herself as independence. In addition, we can take note that initially the snake was not formed as an animal. The Talmud discusses the appearance of the snake before its punishment. Do y'all any any y'all remember what what that was? It was it was a hybrid. It said it kind of it walked upright. It had the appearance of a camel. It did this and did that, you know, and that it was the servant to Adam, and that had Adam not fallen. It would that each each person would have two nakashes that would be their servants. They would collect uh, gold and silver and precious pearls from all cor all four corners of the universe. So that is total code, you know, about what's going on. But if you know the gold and silver and the and the, and the pearls and all that stuff that we've covered, uh, you can you you can plug all, all that in together. And and the fact is, when everything go goes back. Pre, pre, when it all inverts, then that's the way it's going to be. So, what is a servant? A servant is a Metatron. A servant is a is an extension. All it, it, and I'll just give you a Peshat answer. It was the extension of Adam's neural spinal network that ran everything. Okay, a super a, a super conscious outside super conscious that uh, artificial uh, AI. You know, his avatar, if you will. Okay? But what happened? The, the, the avatar on the outside got infected, and then the artificial intelligence took over, decided it was just as smart as the host and took over the host. And this, was, this is Adam's problem today. The Talmud discussed the appearance of the snake before the punishment, pointing out that at time it walked completely upright like a human being. As a result of this, it is believed that it could take Adam's place and marry Eve. The, the snake, snake's argument, on the other hand, was a cover-up for its real intention. He tried to convince Eve that the real way of reaching the highest level, that of doing God's will, was in disobedience. <clears throat> one could still point out, though, that one does not fulfill God's purpose by violating his express word. Going against God's will was an illogical thing to do. We mentioned the tension between Keter and Da'at. Whereas Keter is above the logic, the ot can be applied logic. It's knowledge. It's how things work. You know, you take wisdom and understanding, you put them together, you figure out how something works. That's called the knowledge of doing it. But Keter is still above it. So she ignored this, however, because she wanted the ot. She wanted the knowledge. In fact, by eating, she lost the ot. That was the shattering of the vessel. Pursuing the analogy of a prostitute, let's assume that a prince is totally loyal. Let us say that this prostitute now tells the prince that if he really wants to be loyal, he should be with her because that is truly what his father wants. The test is no longer one of loyalty. It then becomes a mental game, which is not what the king had in mind at all. The Zohar and the Bahir point, both point out, after all, the snake was an angel. Which angel is it? It's, it's, it's Samael, yeah, right? Samael. And so uh, the, the serpent, the, the, the Satan, the serpent. That's just that's just a a token name, you know, a commonality. Just just so it's it, it's to hide the fact of what's going on. In other words, behind the snake was a spiritual being. Who is, who is supposed to want only to accomplish God's will. How then did the snake have gone any further than it was supposed to? One possible answer is that there are times when angels do go beyond what they are supposed to do. Thus they sin and become fallen angels. And Russell, what did you just say? Azazel. 
Azazel, Uza and Azazel, or Aza and Azazel. There's Azazel and there's Uza and Aza, but they're known as Azazel. Yeah. Okay, where do we see these guys? In the uh, Nephilim? They are the Nephilim. They are the the giants in the land that knew the the uh, the children of men, uh, the, the daughters of men. Mm-hmm. All right, and I've taught on this many times, but there those those are these are aspects of Adam. That's the Guru aspect, mm-hmm. and the the women that they were with were just like them. They weren't physicality women. They had their own their own deal. Okay, I've, I've taught taught a class on that. Like the, the aborted ones. Yeah, yeah. Nephilim means the aborted ones. Instead of fallen, they were aborted. So abortion has been around since never not. <laughs> now, how did they get aborted? Where did we, where do we get the fallout? Where do we get the Samael and the Lilith? Where does this come from? These are the daughters. Uh, basically, we can say Sam and Lil are daughters of Uzanaza so to speak. How did it get here? How did they get fallen out? What is the story? Does anybody remember the story? God wanted to create mankind. And the angels came before him and said, don't do it. They're just going to, they're, they're just going to be terrible people. And so God touched them with his finger and, and they were instantly destroyed. And so God says, I want to create mankind. And the angels came before him and said, don't do it. They're going to be terrible creatures. They're just going to kill each other. They're going to rape and murder. And they're just going to be awful, awful creatures. And God's, God, God, they're coming against God. And so God touched them, poof, and they were gone. So God comes before the angels and he says, I want to create um, mankind and Uza and Aza come before him and say, "Hey, your God, do what you want, right? <laughs> All right. Because we've already seen what happens to those that don't do what you want." And I'm, I'm paraphrasing the whole Gemara and, and Zohar here, All right? And 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 so uh, they go, but we wouldn't fall. We wouldn't do what they do. And he goes, oh, yeah, you would. And so at that moment, they, they see that they're angels. They, they see the whole thing, too. All right? And, and so they challenge God, thinking that they told him, Adam's going to, they told God, Adam's going to fall. But, but we could do better. All right? So when Adam fell, what do they do? They come before him and said, I told you so. <laughs> well, who caused, who caused Adam to fall? Them. That, that's the guru. That, that was the positive and negative. That was their deal. That was, that, that was, this is the Bartzino to Cardenusa going down, right? So what does God do? Y'all are out of here. And so... Everything that that is that is the best way to remember it is the mnemonic. That's the ooze of the coagulation of the guvaro. That's the oil. Okay. So who who is the head? This that, this becomes the demonic side. Who is the head of the whole demonic side? Ashmedai. What does Solomon go do? He goes. He asked the Queen of Sheba, who is Lilla, hey, where's Ashmedai? Because, and what does he do? He captures him, puts, chains him up so he can't use his power, mm-hmm. and he wants to know where the mountain of Uzza and Azza is because that's where all the gold is. Hey, see, it's all a story of extraction and all this. So, they're, they're, they're going there in this piece, but there's a whole big blank that they haven't filled filled in, and so, guess who is the, is the son? Uh, guess who was the good son of the Nephilim of Uzza and Azza? Uh, 
God destroys everything at Noah. But something clung to the ark. Oh, oh, oh. So Og, Og is their son. Og is their son. Og is, Og is the Noga of Uzzah and Azza. And so that's why you read the pieces. You know, his tooth was so big, Abraham made a bed out of it. You know, he, uh, or made a chair out of his, you know, made a chair out of his wisdom because of wisdom teeth and all the stuff that, because there's 32 teeth in the head. So that goes back to Log to Omer. But anyway, this is, this is what's going on. The Uzzah and Azza, the Azazel, are the aspects of the heavy denim. And then you've got all the Hasidim, which is the Tzadikim. All right? And so who touches the ark when they're bringing it out with King David and it kills him instantly? A guy named Uzael. <laughs> you see? Now you know why it happened. That was the other side. What it, what, what, how does the... The song of the sea start when it's called Oz. It's the song of it's it's the cracking of Azael. And all right, and so this is why he had to send the Satan over here to the Noga of Job, which is the aspect of he Job was just like Eleazar or Og was to Abraham. He's the one that took the brunt of the deal, because the Noga gets the Noga. Every story in Torah is the story of this happening before creation. Then this this is the this is the story going on in the garden. This is the story going on in the Nephilim. This is the story going on at the Tower of Babel, all the way until we get to uh, we gotta we gotta kill uh, Yom Kippur. What do we do? We have two goats. We have one goat for Kedusha, and the scapegoat is called the goat for Azazel. you got to have one for the other side. This is the entire thing. And what, what is the most heavy ooze, the heaviest guvarot, the heaviest globulated denim known to man? Its name is from Timna. Oh. Timna? Is he raised? <laughs> <laughs> he knows what it is. Amalek. Oh, Amalek. No, Amalek, yeah. This is, I just gave you the whole pro progenitor line of Amalek. So, this is what happened. This was the shattering. This is kicking them out. This is the whole Eve deal. This is the whole that side won't union with this side. The whole admixture, the whole Zuhama entering the poison, the injection. I just gave you the I gave you the whole math right there. And that is what they're talking about there at footnote 69. Now, yet we are taught, thus the angel does not have the evil inclination. Okay? How then can an angel sin? The answer is that an angel could sin in his desire to get closer to God. An angel may want to do God's will even more than, than he was told to do. What did they say? We can do it better. We can do it for you. But they're still challenging him. He's, he's, he let them try, but when you're on that side, the cleepa gets you. And sometimes he can make a mistake in such a case. Similarly, when a snake's mission was to tempt in its desire to excel in its task, it went beyond the permitted. What happened? Messiah is 358. Mashiach is Gematria, 358. Nakash is Gematria, 358. Are there two? Or is it just one? It's just one. If you're looking at it from the front side, it's Mashiach. If you're looking at it from the back side, it's a Nakash. So, so what, as, as this thing is pushing out of Atsilut in making creation, it inverted on itself and it is the Nakash. It's only those who invert the Nakash does it become Mashiach. That's why the, the Talmud says that the Mashiach is, is considered Mitzora on the outside. What, it, what pulled it on the outside? The Nakash. 
And so as soon as we invert the whole nakash thing, it's just one. It's just one thing. One surface, two sides. All right? And so what happens, what happens in Christianity? They're so far on the outside, they're looking through trying to see Mashiach. So everything in between is Mashiach. So there is a barrier here called Nakash, okay, that never cuts his hair, long hair and everything, right? And so there is always an intermediary in their, in their pursuit, where on the front side, it's interface. There is no intermediary. You see how it works. Because one, you're dealing with spirituality, 4D. They're dealing with physicality all the time. That's why they're always fighting the devil. You know, you've never been into a church where they ain't fighting the devil. The devil gave me a flat tire. No, a nail gave you a flat tire. But, but, but because of the lens they're looking through in Bia, there's always going to be an intermediary, one you have to go through to get to through. Where in Torah... That's front side. There is no intermediary. It's interface. Okay? So, let's keep rolling here. The insidious argument of the snake underlies the philosophy of Amalek, who claimed that one could reach the highest holiness by disobeying God and fighting against him. And this is why, as soon as the Jews came out of Egypt, Amalek attacked. Why? Because they are coming back through Azazel. They are coming back through the Kriyat Yam Suf. The Kriyat Yam Suf is the edge of the Ian Sof. God had went beyond himself, and now he's coming back through himself. What's on the outer realm? Azazel. Amalek. So now we see the path that they're going through. Now they're coming back through that darkness for 33 days until they get to the seventh till they get 30, 30 to log the, the Omar. Now we have 17 days. That's the light of that's the light that was uh, primordial light. You see how it works. This is also the philosophy of the build, builders of the Tower of Babel. I'll tell you all how that worked. Who said, who said they were going to go up to the heavens to fight God. In all cases, the very dependence upon free will, uh, free choice, of which with which God endows man to attain his own perfection are used to fight God. What is the why why is everybody trying to fight Israel? Who are they fighting? Israel is God's representation on the earth. They're not fighting Israel, they're fighting God. That's what anti Semitism is. They hate God. They think they can do it better. Well, if I would have ate that apple, you kidding me? God told me not to eat that apple, I wouldn't ate that apple. So, uh, they, they, everybody thinks they can do it better, you know? Well, if I was no, I wouldn't have got drunk on wine. You kidding me? I'm Baptist. I don't even drink. <laughs> That's their thinking. That's true. You see? They're, they're doing the same thing. Rabbi Heim Velosian. Does anybody know who this guy is? He was the Gaon of Vilna's number one right-hand guy. Mm -hmm. He writes this book. This is his, this is his stuff. This is why we're going to go over it. This is the, is the Kabbalah of the Kabbalah. All right? There were no yeshivas before the Gaon of Vilna. The Gaon of Vilna started the yeshivas. And who started it? Heim Velosian. Okay? And from there... You get the Soloveitchik line and the Brisk, and you get all these other schools. Now, they don't all teach the same thing because they start fractaling out, mm -hmm. but, this, but this is where the whole yeshiva idea c comes from. You know, he, he started the, really the first one, all right? Yeah, it's, it's the idea that of drawing close to God through study. Through, through Torah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not, not through, I, can, I think I can do it better. Or singing and dancing and... and Whatever, because the Baal Shem Tov, that was the two schools. Yes. You draw, you know, you know, you can draw close to God through dancing or, and, and, but the Gon and them, they, you drew close to God through study through and study Torah, Torah and knowing Torah. And that's why as soon as the conference is over <clears throat> and as soon as I'm done with this book, we're going to go through this book line by line. It may take us two years, but we're going to teach this entire book. We're because I have the guy that 
is the master of this book. So, anyway, now, Pombolosian stresses that the evil urge represented by the serpent was not a part of Adam before he ate from the tree of knowledge, but something external. As I said, an avatar, right? As sophisticated as the serpent's argument was, Adam was on a much higher level. He was an absolute and could therefore easily distinguish between truth and falsehood. It was only after he ate, only after he had union from the tree that he lost his ability and, and could, uh, could succumb to the serpent's temptation. And we went over last week what Eve's Havamina was, and what Adam's Havamina was, of drinking the dregs. As soon as the serpent got a hold of Eve and drew out the 70, Adam had to go get them. Eve, Eve had now become an integral part of his being, and he could play and could play on his weakness from within. It is thus highly significant that the one thing Adam and Eve were forbidding from was from eating of the tree of Da'at, knowledge of good and evil. As as we have explained, the concept of Da'at is one connecting attachment to the divine. By definition, Da'at implies the overcoming of bearers in the absence of evil. When However, good and evil are joined within us. The ability to distinguish between them has become, impa has become impaired. That's what Russell was saying before class. The lines are being blurred. Mm -hmm. You don't know the difference between good and evil. You know? Mm -hmm. um, like uh, we were watching Narcos, the uh, story of uh, Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar, his eye... As, as bad as it was, he thought he was doing good. You know? Oh, yeah. we're, we're, we, we give thousands of dollars to everybody in Colombia. We're, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're doing good. It's the Americans that are bad because they're the ones that are, are, are mad we're taking all their money. We can't help their buying our product. You see? Mm -hmm. So the lines have been blurred. There's, there, there's no... There, there's yeah, it's... It, it, it talks about the the what is it the 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 evil the evil Tadik is he's like the the mob guy that makes all of this money and then builds a wing onto a hospital. Yeah, that's yeah. the same same thing as this guy. We we call those the Shriners. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to redeem their yeah. Their yeah. <laughs> we got a name for that. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, so. We see what's going on. They're, the Shriners and, 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 and all the, uh, what you call it, what do you call them? Uh, the uh, evil, the, evil side. The Masons. Yeah. They're evil of Russia. evil, the but Russia. they do so much good, the lines are blurred. You see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you like them. Yeah, they, they're, it, they're likable people. That's right. A question that presents itself in any discussion of Adam and Eve is whether Adam would have been punished if he had repented of his sin. Adam's reaction when God faced uh, when God faced him with the sin was rather brazen. He said, "The woman made me do it," <laughs> which is what any man would truly say. Yeah, of course, yeah. the woman that you gave me to be with, she gave me, and, and I. Eve's response was more humble. She confessed, "The snake had essentially seduced her." Later, when Cain was judged by God for the murder of Abel, why was Cain murdered? What did Cain do? I mean, what did Abel do? What did what? he, he took? Uh, was it uh, his? He did. Oh, he took both women. His sister. No, his well, that well, that's what Cain wanted. But what caused he, Abel to die? He, he had something with a sacrifice. Yeah, but he had a good sacrifice. But yeah. what caused him to die? Oh, must he covered Cain's one? No. No, it was the other one. Yeah. What happened to Nadav and Avihu? Remember our Nadav and Avihu talk? Yeah. yeah. Nadav and Avihu did it. Moses did it. He looked at the Shekhinah. Oh, he looked at the Shekhinah. Yeah. He, he had, Abel had created such a union, he looked at the Shekhinah. Isn't that what the rainbow represents? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I'm leading into my next piece. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Russell. So, everybody's stare. it's staring. It's not looking, it's staring. Yeah. It's like staring at a naked yeah. woman. Okay, yeah. you can look, but you know. So, yeah, what did Moses do? Moses, Moses didn't look at the burning bush. 
he did tikkun for it. Remember? In our class we taught. Mm -hmm. But then what does God tell him? Take your shoes off and look. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a point where God has to have the looking. There's three, there's three, three pilgrimages a year that I'll go over, but there's three pilgrimages a year where you're supposed to go to Jerusalem and, and stop outside of town and walk in, get off your donkey and walk in because you have to look at Jerusalem. What's Jerusalem? The place of peace, the place of union, you know, and, and the, the same thing with the temple. It, when the, when the, when they ark, when the Keruvim were on the ark, the, the Kohen Gadol walked in and saw them in union. Okay, mm. so there there is a time for seeing and there's a time for seeing, for not see, seeing and staring. All right, so there's, God has to invite it. There's, a, there's a big distinction, all right, because when he, when, when, the, when you create the union, uh, mm. not of who created the union, mm -hmm. Abel created the union, mm. uh, Adam created the union, and then they look, all right, so what I, Remember what I said at the beginning of class, seeing, and God saw the light was good, God had to see. So there's something going on with the seeing, and we're, we're seeing this refracted light. So we're seeing it now, mm -hmm. all right? But then there is, but when the rainbow comes out, and that's part of the Shekhinah's glory in exile, and then you're looking at that, that's a death penalty. And so, you know, Noah has got the got the rainbow flags and LTGB. What we're seeing is it's a whole rainbow coalition, mm. right? We have the rainbow coalition. <laughs> What's going on here? Is this something that poor scholars have known the whole time? Absolutely. It's all about seeing. All right, seeing is believing. Right. So let's keep going. He exclaimed that his sin was too great for him to bear. He confessed his sin and repented, and he was not killed, but received a lighter punishment. Commenting on uh, this scene, the Midrash states that Adam saw, Cain, returned, and inquired and was surprised at, as to the reason why Cain's punishment was not heavier. When, when, uh, when told that Cain's repentance had brought God's mercy upon him, Adam lamented on his own act and repented, and which, which might have... A, God's forgiveness. What day did he do that on? Adam's Yom Tov. What day is that? That is uh, uh, December, December 25th. the 25th. Well, it's actually the solstice, isn't it? Yom Tov. No, it's a good day. It was a good day. So, what happened? The winter solstice, it was getting darker, 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 darker. And it, as soon as the winter solstice, so what do we do during the winter solstice? We have the light of Hanukkah. Hanukkah. The light coming in. That's Adam. That's Adam bringing the light back in. Yeah. Adam thought the days were going to go all the way out. He, he thought it was in the end of creation. Yeah, he thought it was going to go all and, the way and, out. And so he brings his, his sacrifice, and he has a feast for eight days. And then he throws a big party mm -hmm. on January the first. Hmm. See, that's, that's so. The back, that's, and we see it. We do it all as the backside. And we do it all on the backside with Jesus and and, and, and New Year's Day, instead of Adam's Yom Tov. All right, everything's in Torah, and everything is everything here is outside of Torah. But it's all all you got to do is use the one hundred eighty degree rule and flip it around, and you'll see it from the front side every stinking time. Okay, and instead of worshiping on the first day of the week, you worship on the last day. Of the week. Mm -hmm. It works out every time. Okay, now prompted by this realization, Adam uh, exclaimed, "I'm not going to read the Hebrew there." Psalm 91, which we love to read on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Translation is a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to thank Hashem. According to the Midrash, however, the word is is not thank but rather to confess or admit to God. Adam thus realized that true repentance must involve in confessing one's sin before God. As the Baal Shem Tov explains, this was because all of man's deeds, even sins, contain sparks of holiness from the broken, shattered vessels. 
When a person confesses, he removes these sparks from the realms of evil and elevates them back to their source. Since sincere repentance has the power to return everything to its source and unite man with his creator, the Talmud thus states an over overriding rule. Nothing can stand before a person's repentance. No matter what sin a person has committed, no matter what terrible life he may have led, if he repents and does teshuva, can rectify everything. In fact, it is for this reason that the psalm is dedicated to the Shabbat. That's why we say it on Shabbat. The word HaShabbat shares the same root words as teshuva, as seen and it as we have seen, the world to come is called a world which is all Sabbath, a world which is all teshuva, where all evil is rectified. What does that mean? Everything has been inverted. This is because the whole concept of Shabbat is to invert everything to its source and make union. Immediately after the story of Cain and Abel, the Torah states, Adam knew his wife again and gave birth to Seth. What did he do? Brought in the Shabbat. Who is, who is the seventh? Who is Shabbat? Eve. She's the Malchut. The Torah then goes on to reiterate something that, have already been, that has already been said. On the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female. He blessed them and named them Adam. By, by knowing his wife again, see, they, they leave out the whole Sam and Lilith part. Now, now this one will be called woman. Adam is showing that repentance was complete. And, now, and, and he is now ready to receive the blessing of being like God in union with Eve. It is for this reason that the Torah is able to write the very next verse. Adam lived 130, 130 years, and he, and he had a son in his likeness form of Seth. See, the previous 130 years, he was getting rid of the contamination. 130 years later, he has Seth. What do we know about 130? Well, the purification of Adam in the river. See, yep, exactly. That was going on. If we have yud hey vav hey, which is 26 times the five guru wrote, we get 130. And Jacob lived to be? 130. <laughs> it's math, brother. It's just, just the math. Right. And Jake, Jacob, Jacob lived to be 130. Well, huh? he's Adam. So, according to your tradition, Adam was totally depressed in the wake of his sin for the 130 years. We know what he was doing. Yeah, he was impressed all right. It was only after he saw Cain repent that he realized his mistake and was go. able to elevate the sparks of holiness which had fallen and resulted in his sin. That's right. By stating that Seth was born in Adam's likeness, what does that mean? He was born in Adam uh, in circumcised. Yeah, yeah. With he no wasn't, he wasn't contaminated. He wasn't contaminated. The Torah is indicating that he was at an extremely high level. And the language of the Midrash, Seth was born circumcised just as, they, they go ahead and tell us, yeah. was born circumcised just as his father had been before the sin. Mm -hmm. We are told that the extent of that was possible. Adam and Eve were able to rectify what they had done wrong. Mm -hmm. So if Adam and Eve were able to rectify what they had done wrong, why are we and still in this everybody mess? Everybody from that point on can do the same thing. That's right. There's nothing going on but that. But, why, but, but our Kasha question is, if it was rectified, why are we still in this mess? Because there's two planes running. One is running six days and one is running 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. it, they, they are living the six days mm -hmm. every week, and we are living the six days every week, but on, that's on the micro. On the macro, we're running 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. a, 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 th a thousand years is the day to God, right? So mm -hmm. they did rectify it. They did fix it. It's all fixed. We're just running. We're just running through the the fractal timeline that Adam is watching it being fixed, and then it's done. It's it doesn't have to be done. We're a part of it. We're a part of Adam doing it. You see. Now, 
Their teshuva was thus paralleled with the tikkun or rectification of Atsilu. So Atsilu and all that goes back down. So that is going to be where, where we'll stop in that. The next time we do some of that, we're going to do, we're going to start on the Park Su theme. How far do we go? Ah, we'll, 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 we'll stop there. Uh, we will do, we will do the rainbow and the secret of the rainbow and the secret of looking because it's all about peering or peeking. Adam peeked into the into the mind bridge, riding. Okay. Uh, Abel peaked. Adam and Noah peaked. Nadav and Avihu peaked. Every, this is what's going on. Don't peek. And so and and, and so what happens? <laughs> what what happens? The man can't not look at the curved woman, the curved light. He can't not. Yeah. All right? The woman is the Shekhinah. The woman is the curved light. All right? The man, the men are visual. They got to look. Women are, are not. It is, but, but it is the peeking and the staring. And so what are we, what are we seeing now? We're... Everything is all out there. So now it's flipping and just like is it not, not too looky, but it's the, well, the intent of your look or? Well there's a there there's a you have to be you have to be you have to woo the Shahina and then she has to allow you to look. Because see you done saw the rainbow before you know not to look at it. That's right. It's staring. The prohibition is staring. There you go. Okay? Not looking, staring. You can't go, oh, look at that rainbow. Hey, look at that rainbow. Look, isn't that pretty? There's your problem. Okay? But, you, there's because there is a, a, a prescribed blessing, you see a rainbow, you, you make a bracha. You know, mm -hmm. bless you, I got the king of the universe, create a rainbow. You know? Mm -hmm. And be, because that's that's that 4D union. Mm -hmm. That's the organ news. That's the 70. That's the lights. They're trying to get the 70 back. All right, so there's a whole thing going on, but now we're seeing the rainbows everywhere and all this kind of stuff. So uh, I'll read the part of the lesson about. I'll, I'll, I'll do that next class. First thing, y'all remember, remind me, remember me. <laughs> you know, remember and you. we'll see y'all next week. The Torah is amazing. Sages are amazing. We'll see you next week. Adios, everybody. Something in the staring. Or something about he said that on, on uh, Nadav and Avi.